It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Buck Bait. Better the Hunt. Rebel Six Rubs and Seasonings. Easy Cut. Limb Walker Game Calls. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Packer Max. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Scent Blocker. Scent Lock. Copper John. And Stanislavski Release Aids. Hey, welcome back everybody to another episode of the Up North Journal. I'm sitting here in the cabin tonight. Mike Adams, along with Dan DeFaw and the UP. Danny, what is going on, my man? What is happening down south? Well, it, first off, it's not Sunday night. This is Wednesday night. We're doing a special pre-record. We've got a guest that's waiting in the wings anxiously. But uh, we're getting ready to do a pre-recorded show so we can all three of us get outside and play this weekend and not have to worry about coming in on a holiday weekend and doing a show. So Absolutely. So with that being said, Danny, uh, you want to go ahead and uh, let's run through the people who help us. You know what? We should because we always like to help our listeners with a discount and helps our sponsors who help us help them. So anyways, um, nothing like starting off with Rebel 6 Rubs. I had some chicken tonight for dinner. Yeah, I use Rebel 6 Rubs. You need to go out and check it out at the Rebel 6 Rubs website, rebel6rubs.com. And guess what? If you use our promo code, North Journal, you can get 20% off. There you go. On the checkout, use those promo codes at their website, get your discount. But that's not all. Because you're using Rebel 6 Rubs, rub, you got to wash it down. How about with some Hunter's Blend Coffee? That's right. Go over to huntersblendcoffee.com. Use the promo code UNJ, capital UNJ that is. That's right. And then you can get 10% off your order. There you go. And then you can wash down your Rebel 6 Rubs, Hunter's Blend Coffee. You know, after dinner, you got some little time on your hands, rest and relaxation. How about heading over to Buck Bait? It's that time of year. We're only less than 90 days away, I think, from uh, bow season here in Michigan. Start checking out their lineup. And if you use our promo code, Up North Journal, you can get 20% there as well. Absolutely. So you got your rub, you got your coffee to drink, and then you can do a little shopping at Buck Bait doesn't get any better than that. I'm telling you, folks, get over there. Do some shopping. Help people who help us. Absolutely. And you know what, Danny? We pulled that off pretty good. I mean, we're sitting here back and forth, and you're not even in the cabin. I know. <laughs> so, but I'll tell you what, without further ado, let's just jump into the show tonight. Uh, you know, we, we've had this guest on before, but uh, we were want to invite him back. And Ellery Tucker Williamson, or Tucker Williams, I'm sorry, not Williamson, but Williams, Joins us all the way from Napa, Idaho. Is that right? Yep, that's where I'm at these days. Okay, I didn't know if that's how I pronounced it or not. It's, it's Napa, right? Yep. Kind of like Tampa, but with an N. Yep, kind of like wine country, but they add an M in there. Okay, all right. Well, we'll, we'll take that. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, we want to talk to you about uh, a couple things tonight. You know, we've got a lot of COVID stuff still going on. You know, matter of fact, here in Michigan tonight, they, they closed all the drinking establishments back down again. Uh, yep. due to that kind of stuff but we got the fourth of july weekend here uh, we are pre-recording but you know we're right in the middle of the fourth of july season and we want to talk about the outdoors you guys come out with uh, the congressional sportsman's foundation who you work for uh right. has come out with uh, a campaign of sorts about getting into the outdoors safely and uh responsibly i guess absolutely absolutely so uh, CSF in partnership with a couple other organizations, including National Wild Turkey Federation, uh, Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership, Pheasants Forever, Quail Forever, Trout Unlimited, who else? Uh, American Sport Fishing Association, Dallas Safari Club, and the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies kind of all came together for this campaign that we call Hashtag Responsible Recreation. That's and, a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> it is, it is. But it kind of really shows you the importance of this issue because it brings together so many different organizations that are really focused on conservation, wildlife, hunting, fishing, all of those things that really came together because there was a need. And that need was that with all this COVID business going on and having to, you know, stay at, stay at home orders mm -hmm. and needing to find alternative activities since things were kind of shutting down, it was really a need to make sure that our Americans' access to public lands remained still intact 
and including hunting and fishing and recreational shooting amidst all the COVID closures. So that's really what responsible recreation is about. It's about maintaining our access to the outdoors and our beloved traditions mm-hmm. um, by acting responsibly while in the field. Okay, I, I got the uh, the slide up. Uh, go to www.responsible-recreation.org to learn more. So you guys, you've got a website on this to kind of give the, the whole layout of what you're trying to, to get across here, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's really fairly simple. I mean, sportsmen and women have kind of been the kings and queens of social distancing, per se, for a long time. Mm -hmm. But it's really about setting a good example when you go outdoors, you know, maintaining proper social distancing, following CDC guidelines, being sure to pack out your trash so it doesn't give the the appearance of overuse. Um, things of those nature, just kind of basic tenants that we really all should already be doing, but just in case you aren't, just a friendly reminder, education to do so, so that way that our access to the outdoors and those activities don't get taken away. Because when all this COVID business started, you know, states that were trying to control the spread, flatten the curve, all those things, mm-hmm. they really, you know, limb start, start some of the states really started limiting access to the outdoors and that's really what kind of brought this issue to our attention well you know it, it's interesting you bring that up danny and i uh we, we talked about this a lot i mean danny you as, as well as myself know what they did to people here in the state of michigan with recreational yeah. boating you know with motors on yeah. the boat you know they said you know that, that that's one thing they, they started with with boaters and and uh at the uh over at the Seven Lakes, they were shut, uh, closing up the bathrooms and shutting everything down. and it, it was just interesting, to say the least. Yeah, they wanted us to get outside. Go enjoy the parks. But the the vault toilets, they shut. Um, and they brought porta potties out that still had to be cleaned. And I don't, I, we never did really understand why that happened in that, that way. But, uh, you know, the park rangers were making sure people were staying social distance. They wouldn't let you... Um, request or um what am i say make a a reservation for like a pavilion for maybe a a family reunion or what have you and then you could you could canoe you could kayak you could use an electric trolling motor but you couldn't use any motorized boats at all in the state so i guess we kind of kind of ran through that whole gamut so to speak yeah exactly and that a lot similar things happen you know kind of throughout the country like specifically here in idaho they um didn't allow non-resident spring turkey hunting okay. just to not have influx of people from out of state washington and illinois for example had blanket closures which was a pretty big deal they closed turkey season um initially for a good chunk of the season um fishing was shut down all all sorts of closures were done trailheads were closed um but thankfully like in Michigan and as well as the other states like Washington, CSF was very involved in working with the state agencies and governor's offices and legislative sportsmen's caucuses to kind of help turn those things around and get those things back open and available to the public as long as, you know, people were being responsible about it. Yeah. Did you see a lot of uh, or hear of a lot of pushback of people saying, you know what, I don't care what they say, I'm going to go do what I'm going to go do. And, or or was was most of the outdoorsmen, which I hope that we were we all behaved, so to speak. Right. Uh, um. I definitely think it varies. You know, there's it definitely varies. There's a lot of people that were upset, like when turkey season was closed. My brother, whom you mm-hmm. are very well acquainted with, was yeah. less than amused, to say the least. Him um, and I talk quite a bit about that online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he was definitely less than amused, um, but a lot of it was blowing off steam, mm-hmm. I think. It's just a lot of people that were upset, but ultimately listened, so that that was good, but definitely there was a lot of uproar from the sporting community, which in turn helped to, you know, switch things around, and you mm-hmm. know, they did, Washington did have a later turkey season, a short later turkey season, and They've opened fishing back up and okay. things like that. So it, it definitely, um, the sportsman's voice was heard. Heard loud and clear. Least. Good. Well, that's good to know, too. And good to know that, you know, the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, uh, all of y'all there were, were uh, fighting on our behalf uh, up on, on uh, Capitol Hill, at least on, on the federal level. Did I assume as well you guys were, were really pushing back, too, on a, on a state level? It was mostly state level. Okay. Actually, just because, you know, the state, the statewide closures or whatnot were from governor's offices. So it was really a state, state-led state effort. Um, I think we sent over 300 letters throughout the country to different, to every governor's office, um, every single sportsman's caucus, 
every state agent's fish and game agency, which resulted in, I think, a cert over 300 letters expressing the need to keep access open, that it's a good way for people to get outside and kind of escape being cooped up inside for too long. Um, not to mention the mental and physical benefits that everyone gets when they go outside and participate in these activities. Right. And it's a really good opportunity um, for R3. So uh, hunter and fisherman and um, shooter um, retention reactivation. Let's see. R3. Recruitment retention and reactivation. There so, you go. <laughs> there <laughs> I like, and, I, and, I, and I tell you what. You're right, getting there. That, that was one of the things here in the state of Michigan alone. Uh, besides that, that, that need to get out, uh, to get yourself away from the four walls, uh, from the top to the bottom of the state, there was a considerable a difference of opinion, whether you were in the Southern lower to the upper peninsula, uh, and vice versa. And it was one of those things. It really started to play on your psyche when you couldn't, uh, they didn't want you to, you were like, I need to get out. I myself was out walking five miles a day just to get that two hours of get me out of the house because I can't go anywhere else and yep. and deal with it. Yeah, yeah it, it's definitely a mind game when you're told you can't do something. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's you want to do exactly what the opposite, you know, at that point. And, and, you know, there was travel. It really wasn't travel restrictions, but, they well, there was and there wasn't. They didn't want, you couldn't travel to your second home or your cabin um, or, you know, whatever up north. You know, we've got, you know, hunting land up north. They they didn't want you traveling, and uh, they were really yep. poo-pooing that as well. Um, you know, it had been really interesting to see. I mean, Michigan, we, we've, we've kind of been in the national news a lot lately, but back when this all kind of started, uh, the Second Amendment people really went, uh, you know, no pun intended, up in arms and m- marched on the Capitol. And actually, you know, it became national news. Um, yeah. I, I would have liked to have seen um, maybe uh, a more organized effort here by hunters and fishermen at that point, maybe to, you know what, hook your boat up to your truck and let's let's drive around the Capitol with all of our boats. And let's show people, you know, how, how many people, you know, we've actually got out here that, that are really ticked off and, and, yeah. ma- and make a statement that way. Because I, I, I've seen other people do you know there's other marches and things going on especially right now in, across the united states but if the sportsmen would gather like that and rise rise up and do it peacefully and make a statement i think that'd be powerful it's definitely definitely powerful i mean sportsmen ha- have traditionally been more you know they're very passionate what they do but they don't t- tend to really want to get in the spotlight they just want to go out in the woods be away from people <laughs> and be left alone <laughs> <laughs> be left alone yeah but it's definitely you know there's times when it, there needs to be a unified voice right and there's times when people need to rise to the occasion and express you know that these are our public lands uh we pay for conservation on them they're very important to us and if we can and if we can utilize those resources in a res- responsible way mm-hmm. hashtag responsible recreation then we should be allowed to do so you know, um, I've got some more slides here that I, I do want to show, but I tell you what, let's go ahead. We'll take our first break and let, let's really kind of dive into this, uh, the responsible recreation uh, agenda or uh, platform that you guys have and talk a little more about that when we come back. So we're going to step outside. We'll take our first break. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, second segment of the show. We're talking with Ellie Tucker Williams, all the way from Napa, Idaho. She is the Western States Coordinator of the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation. Did I get that right? The Intermountain. I do the Rocky, the Rockies. The Intermountain. Okay. All right. So uh, we've been talking about responsible recreating, uh, the hashtags, and the platform that they've got going. But right when we went to break. Uh, or during the break, Danny said that he wanted to talk about something, so I'm going to turn him loose. Go ahead, Danny. What do you got? You know, the, you, you talked to Ellery was talking about responsible recreation, mm-hmm. and it's summertime. It's nice. You get out to do some fishing. I was I've been doing fishing this week. There's nothing worse than when I go for a walk around the lake over at the state park, 
and I see floating in the water at the bottom of the water in the shallow end or, or laying on the, the, the shore, mm-hmm. empty containers of worms. Really? Right. You let, them, you, you let them get in the water. You can't pick it up. You can't throw it out. Really? Let's try being a little bit responsible and cleaning that stuff up. Well, it just goes back to the old adage and old saying, you know, leave, leave it better than what you found it. It's pretty simple. That's simple, huh? You know. Yeah, not for some people. You know, and it just, uh, it's not good for the water. It's not good, you know, plastics in the water. I mean, we, we've talked about that with uh, uh, with Yamaha Motors. Uh, they, they're doing the, the big push with their, uh, what is that called, Danny? Right, right Waters. Right Waters Initiative, where they're, yes, exactly. they're pulling the plastics out of the water. So, um, you know, this kind of all goes hand in hand. And... Uh, Actually, when we were talking with them, Ellery, uh, they, they, uh, we mentioned uh, Chris Horton, and they knew of Chris. So um, yep. there was that good connection there between y'all and them. So uh, we're all talking about the same thing, doing the same thing here. So, But, uh, you know, let's dive into this a little bit. You know, one of the things that, that kind of struck me, uh, I want to find the slide on it here if I can real quick uh, as we're, we're talking. I should have had this up already, but I don't. Uh, but it was talking about respectful on social media i mean come on <laughs> we're our own worst enemy a lot of the times uh talk a little bit about this and, and what you guys mean by by this absolutely so you know we all like to go outside love to take pictures love to document you know the, the big fish that we caught or the cool animal we saw or just having fun outside and it's just important that you know as we try to recreate responsibly in the outdoors that when you do share your adventures on social media that you're portraying in those photos the responsible activities in which you're preaching so it's you know you can't say go outside and don't leave trash and then you take a picture and there's you know cans or worms floating in the floating in the the water behind you so it's just making sure that you're respectfully and promoting this idea of responsible recreation on social media as opposed to, like you said, being our worst enemy. Right. Be, be cognizant of what you have around you and what you're showing in the photo, uh, as well as with the game animal itself, you know. Um, I mean, yep. we, we've all been t- you know, really cognizant of that here in the last, you know, five, ten year, years about how to take, <clears throat> excuse me, take a photo to not yep. offend the non-hunting or fishing public out there. And you know, it's like, well, I don't care, you know, who I offend them with that. You know, they, they don't, you know, well, yeah, because it might be somebody on the fence. You know, and that's the thing we want. We want to get more people involved in this. So that's the things we need to think about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's definitely one of those things where it just takes one picture and one thing to be misconstrued and it can blow up. And it's just not something that you want to give those people that are on the fence or the people that have already decided that hunting and fishing is not something that they support Mm -hmm. to use that against the entire community, which is not representative of all of us. So that's definitely something that we need to be cognizant of. Well, there's another part here that I, I really liked, um, especially with COVID going on right now. Plan ahead. Purchase a license and pass uh, and passes online to avoid overcrowding of public lands. Uh, I, I think it kind of kills two birds with one stone there, so to yep. speak. Uh, you know, you don't have the overcrowding of the public lands. You know, maybe stay close to home. If you've got property, recreate on your own property. But also, if you do it online, you don't have to go to the store and put yourself uh, amongst other people that where you might catch, you know, catch the Rona, as we say. <laughs> yes, yes. Or if you have it and you're asymptomatic, not spread it around. Exactly. So, um, yep. I, Ellery, a, a question for you about about this initiative, being responsible and stuff. Is this something that you can? Uh, turn towards the younger generation in schools and stuff to start to educate them on on being responsible when they go outdoors whether it be uh, starting with their backyard and then just getting bigger as they get older is this something we can uh, point to an education absolutely i definitely think that it could be um tailored that way i mean it started off just with um covid19 and trying to make sure that our access to our land doesn't get taken away and our activities but I absolutely think that it could easily be tailored to some type of educational platform um, to really start, you know, start young and teaching people how to properly engage with the outdoors and, and our public lands and making sure that we're being good stewards of, of the lands and our activities. Absolutely. That's kind of where I was going to go with that, because I wouldn't mind seeing a grade school class 
pick uh, whatever grade that week and have them go walk over outdoors, maybe help pick up the trash at, at the state park or wherever they might be able to go for a couple hours just to educate them that, hey, it's out there to go enjoy. And while you're out there enjoying it, let's keep it clean and be responsible about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's actually a wonderful idea. I might, I might have to steal that from you and see what, <laughs> see what CSF can, uh, can see what we can work into it. There you go. That's awesome. You know, talk a little bit about taking the pledge. What, what, is, what is taking the pledge? I mean, we obviously know taking a pledge to do that, but I mean, what more can we do besides say, hey, uh, I'm going to recreate responsibly? I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. As you can go online, we have a, a pledge where you say, I pledge to, you know, rec- to engage in responsible recreation. Um, but you can do all sorts of things. It's just about, you know, walking, walking the talk. Okay, and uh, there's no one here talking about uh, uh, what's your catch of the day. Is is that just uh, to promote uh, more of the fishing side to take a picture, whether you, it's catch and release or whether you take it home and cook it and eat it? Yeah, it's the, all of it, all of it. So it's definitely, um, you know, in in. Um, sorry, my dog just came in. It's That's okay. okay. No, we we like pets on the show. That's sit, fine. Sit. She's been outside, so she's <laughs> feeling a little uh, a little neglected. Um, but. You know, what's your catch of the day is basically ask, telling people that they can take a wonderful photo of their fish, spread it out there to social media. You can put hashtag responsible recreation and just show people that you can get outside. It's really fun. Encourage other people to do so. But again, doing it in a responsible manner. Okay. And that goes along with the, the trade the inside for the outside as well. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And like I said earlier, you know, this so a silver lining to COVID, if you want to call it that, is that it's really helped our our three efforts. So, like, I, we don't have numbers nationwide, but Minnesota has sold more than a hundred thousand fishing licenses at this point in the year than they did last year. Wow. Okay. And North Dakota is reporting that they've seen an increase in, of thirty seven percent in their license sales as well. Mm-hmm. So I think that with people having less activities that they can go do regularly, like you said, going going out to eat or going to the bars or concerts or what mm-hmm. have you, that they're really starting to look for alternative activities. Right. And fishing now, you know, hunting coming up, um, recreational shooting, all these things are kind of resurfacing and we're really get, seeing a potential for a new generation of sportsmen and women, which is really encouraging. And it definitely then plays into benefiting our conservation and wildlife management through the American system of conservation. You know, so. it, I just thought of something I was going to ask you, and you led right into it. But I tell you what, um, before we get into because I think it might take a little bit, let's go ahead and take a break. We come back, and we'll continue this in the, in the next segment. How about that? Perfect. Sounds All right. good. All right. We're going to step outside. We're going to take another break. We'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. You know, for those of you people that are listening to this on the podcast instead of watching the, the live stream, you really got to go back and watch the, the re-airing of these things because we have a lot of fun in the break. We do. <laughs> and that's all we're going to say about that because Dan, Danny is, uh, Danny's trying to get his name put on, on an initiative here, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, uh, kind of getting back to you, you're talking about... Uh, with all of this, bringing new people in, and it's it's going to help the outdoors and help conservation and recreation, the whole nine yards. What I, I've heard across the board here lately, and Danny can testify to the same thing because we've talked about it on the show, that especially right now because it's fishing season, that you know you can't find a kayak, you can't find life jackets, you can't find tackle, you can't find rod and reels because everybody's buying them, like you said, with the fishing license. I've got to think that the Pittman-Robertson and the Johnson-Dingle funds are just going to grow exponentially this year because of that. Is, do you think that's the case? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like, like we mentioned, Minnesota, Minnesota alone had over 100,000 more fishing licenses at this point this year than they did last year. So they're 
their conservation funding has, is going to be much more significant and similar trends are being seen elsewhere. So like, uh, what was it? Uh, Alabama um, saw a 50% increase in hunters using WMAs, uh, wildlife management areas, uh, during spring turkey season than they did previously. So it's, it kind of also leads circles, it all circles back around and is all connected again back to responsible recreation because mm -hmm. as you have this increase in people being either first time interested in the outdoors or people that are being reactivated into the outdoors because, you know, all of a sudden they have all this time on their hands, whether mm -hmm. it's home because they're, you know, they can't go into the office anymore, kids aren't in school anymore. And so it circles all back around because you're having this influx of people to the to the outdoors and to these different activities mm -hmm. uh and then you're going to have increased use increased crowding and all these different things so it's important that while COVID is in a sense promoting the outdoors and getting people outside it's important to make sure that new people new to the activities and new to the outdoors are educated and being responsible when they're recreating outside that's a great point you know because we, we talk a lot about the reactivation you know especially people that were out of work but you know what do they do they give their buddy call hey you know you said you want to go turkey hunting we're not working hey go with me i'm gonna teach you you know and i think that's probably that's on us hunters you know really to start uh trying to to educate people more you know along with the organizations like yours and and all the others out there because uh, you don't want it to look like uh, Miami Beach or, you know, or down there in the Ozarks at that Lake of the Ozarks yep. with everybody together, you know, on public land. I mean, you want them to enjoy the public land, but we've got to do it responsibly, like you said. Right. And otherwise, we're all we're all going to be impacted if things get shut down because people aren't being responsible about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's all about us collectively looking out for each other and making sure that we collectively take care and are responsible outdoors so that way we can all continue to keep enjoying hunting, fishing, recreational shooting, hiking. I mean, there's a, lots of people use public lands, not just sportsmen and women. So we all need to help take care of it and make sure that we don't become the reason why things get shut down. You know, absolutely. Um, you know, and the other thing too is like you, you start getting these areas crowded and, and crowded for hunters is different than social distancing. Because uh, yeah. we, we, I put a picture of myself in a tree stand here uh, last week, and I had my face mask, and I said, "Us hunters have been practicing social distancing for years before it was even cool, you know." So, but you know, you don't want to encroach upon other hunters, you know, and even fishermen in a boat, you know, there's that uh, unwritten rule uh, of what's appropriate, and what's not appropriate, where you get right. inside somebody's fishing bubble or hunting bubble, so to speak. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Get the dirty looks, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, you know it, it would be interesting to see the influx of, of uh, all the monies that are flowing into, uh, right now, obviously, fishing season, because I know uh, over at the local stores, they seem to be running low on, on the fishing gear itself. And I know walking over at the state parks, the influx of just people in general and cars uh, has grown exponentially for the springtime. Usually when I'm over there spring turkey hunting, you barely ever see anybody, but not right. this time around. It's, it was busy all spring long. So it'd be interesting to see the two things, uh, the influx of money into the sportings, and also how many people ran out and purchased the park stamp for their license when they never did before. Right. Well, right. I, it will I, be interesting. My son this weekend, uh, uh, both my kids, both my sons wanted to go kayaking and they loaded everything up. And as we're getting ready to pull out the driveway, you know, I look at his the back of his plate and I go, hey, stop, stop. And I said, he's what? And I said, you ain't got a park sticker. I said, stop and buy one, you know, on the way through. I said, they're going to ticket you. You know, you got to have it because like Danny said, you know, there's probably a lot of people that are using the parks now. Uh, maybe that never have before. So, you know, and, and it's not just hunting and fishing. Like you said, no. it's it's hiking, camping, uh, kayaking, horseback riding. I mean, there's all kinds of things in the outdoors that people, you know, use the outdoors for that we're all in this together. Yep, so, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of want to shift gears just a little bit in the time we got left here uh, and just touch on it briefly. Uh, there was a couple weeks ago we had a, uh, the Outdoors Act that was passed. And then I just got today on my phone uh, an email from you guys, Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, about uh, the American Wildlife Restoration Act that you guys are pushing. Can you touch on both of those just a little bit and what they mean for the outdoorsman? Absolutely. So the Great American Outdoors Act um, basically helps to fund uh, infrastructure backlogs and things like that in national parks. Um, originally, it didn't have any language in it for like public lands, like BLM or um, Forest Service lands and things like that. So 
CSF was really active in making sure that in this Great American Outdoors Act that that money was set aside to be able to use for our public lands and our federal agencies um, in order to help with maintenance backlog, but also promote access and things like that. Okay. All right. And uh, now that was uh, that was the one that was just passed the 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 Outdoors Act, correct? Yeah, the Great uh, Great American Outdoors Act. Yep, it was just just now, through the Senate. Yep. That one went through yep. the Senate. Is it went through the House yet or no? Um, I do not believe the House yet. No. Okay. And then the other ones in the House, but not through the Senate yet. Correct. Correct. And that is uh, RAWA, Recovering America's Outdoors Act, which got, I believe, um, added into the transportation bill. Okay. I and, believe. And, and it, that, that one basically is funding for increased funding for state agencies in order to, you know, be more effective with what they do for conservation and whatnot. So it's just providing them with more money in order to continue to do what they do and to do it more effectively. Okay. And is that, I mean, and you may or may not know the answer to this question. I, I'm digging just a little deeper, but that those monies are, are, where do you know where those monies are coming from by chance? Um, let's see. I believe should know this. Let me pull it out of my brain here real quick. Um, I believe they are federal, they're federally appropriated, but they're from, um, Oh, why am I? Let's see. It's from the. That's okay if I put you on the spot. It's oil and tax. It's oil and gas taxes is for one, and I can't remember quite what the other is. The, I believe that was the first one. If I re- once you said yep. that, I do remember that now. It, it's coming off of the those oil, the oil uh, like the the pipelines and the platforms yep, and things exactly. of that nature. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so. We're seeing a little bit of money coming off of that for for our outdoorsmen, which is good, and uh, and it's and it's receiving bipartisan uh, support as well. Yes, which is yes. very good. Both, both are, which is very important. You know, and, it's definitely one of those things where you, you don't, you know, CSF is is bipartisan, bipartisan organization, and so it's really wonderful when we get pieces of legislation that have bipartisan support. Mm-hmm. Um, because, like you, like we were saying, outdoors is for everybody doesn't really matter what side of the aisle that you're on. We all want to take care of the outdoors. We want to all continue to have access to the outdoors. And that doesn't really come into play as far as what side of the aisle you're on. That's right. When I go in the outdoors, I, I don't want politics in it <laughs> at, at all. That's Right now, that's the last thing I want to deal with. <laughs> right. It's called yeah. recreation and relaxation. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, Mike, you brought, you brought yeah. up a good point. Um, uh, you got an email. Uh, Ellery, is there is there uh, somewhere uh, somewhere uh, our listeners can go to to sign up to get a newsletter, just as Mike did, to get information as it comes out, so they get up to date and find out what's going on that you're all 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 about in Washington. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's called the Sportsman's Voice. It's our weekly newsletter, and we get updates from federal updates, what's going on on Capitol Hill, all the way down to you know all the different regions. So you'll have articles from what CSF is doing and working on and engaged in from all over the country. Um, so you can go on to our, our website, it's congressionalsportsmen's.org, and you can basically go and sign up for the Sportsman's Voice and get a weekly newsletter, and it doesn't cost anything, and it's a good good way to kind of figure out what, what's going on. You know, the thing I like Next. about it is you get, like you said, it's from all across the country, all different states and everything, and what's going on federally as well. And I don't read read them from top to bottom every week, you know, but I do glance through and see what's going on. And if there's something that, you know, is piques my curiosity, I'll read it. But that way, you know, you never know. There might be something going on out in the Dakotas. And who knows, we may go out there and bird hunt or deer hunt one day. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, there might be some new legislation that that maybe put some money in to do habitat work. And that's where you're hunting. There's, yep. you know, you, you, it helps you stay up to date on what's going on and is not just your backyard, but everywhere else as well. Absolutely. And it's definitely important, too, because a lot of the times, you know, people get upset when things go on that, and when regulations change. But a lot of times that when people start getting upset is when they start being rolled out. You know, the, the opportunity yeah. to uh-huh. affect change has already come and gone. Mm-hmm. So... It's the sportsman's voice is a good way to kind of stay up to date on what's going on currently. So that way, if something starts going on in your backyard that you're not too happy about, it's a good way for you to get ahead of the curve as opposed to 
just getting mad because it's passed or it's done and there's nothing you can do about it Absolutely. at that point in time anymore. Absolutely. We, we, just, we, just give them, we just give them your name, Ellery. <laughs> Perfect. I know, I know who to send them to if I can't help them. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know, I, I want to th- throw uh, the slate up here again about the responsible recreation before we let you go uh taking the pledge uh here's a picture you, you can you can go on your guys's website i assume and there's these the, all these slides are up there and you can grab them and and put them on your own facebook page is that right um they are not but if people are interested in wanting to do it they can just put their own photos up and just make sure to put the hashtag responsible recreation in the caption and they're they're part of part of the movement. Okay, so use that hash, the hashtag responsible recreation. I got that slide up now. It's got it on there, and yep. you know, and you can say, hey, I took the pledge uh, with your photo, whatever you're doing in the outdoors. So, uh, yep, and, and get over to their website as well and uh, take a, a peek at it. But uh, is there anything else that we missed on that that we need to cover? Uh, I don't think so. I think we've kind of covered it all. You know, there's a lot of organizations that have already kind of start supporting this this movement and this campaign, just to name a few, you know, Cryptech, um, Huck Gear, Carbon TV, Browning, uh, FN, BASS Bass. So there's a lot of really big organizations that are a part of this, that are supporting this. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a big deal. It's, it's a good thing. It's a big movement. Good That's day. awesome. Um, do you foresee uh, being at, maybe in the bigger trade shows, like uh, maybe SHOT Show or the ATA Show? uh next year you know and, and pushing some of these agendas as well I, I don't think i've ever seen a booth at ata that i recall as far as for csf or for responsible recreation or uh, well csf and, and pushing their uh you know their support on things like that right so csf d- definitely attends shot show um i don't believe that we had a booth last year but we were definitely there okay um so we're definitely at a lot of these uh, larger trade shows. I was just at um, the one in Salt Lake City, the Western Hunting and Conservation Expo. Okay. In uh, February. So, well, they, absolutely. I mean, and like I said, Response Recreation is just just starting to take off. And, you know, I think it's definitely going to evolve past COVID and kind of see how, how it can continue to keep promoting and educating people on how to be responsible outdoors. Well, yeah, the, the, the message alone, it... it, it over it just overreaches COVID, you know, as well. I mean, just in, in just the normal everyday life of an outdoorsman. I mean, we can use all of these things uh, to help promote the outdoors in a good way. So I think it's great. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we're wrapping up here, uh, the third segment here of the show. Um, we're going to go ahead and let you go. I appreciate you taking some time with us and, uh, and sitting down for 45 minutes or so here to talk about this. Uh, like I said, get over to their website again. Once again, Ellery is? Uh, Congressional Sportsman Foundation. Or you can go to responsible-recreation.org. All right. Well, we're going to take a step outside. When we come back, I'm going to talk to Danny a little bit about what he's been doing this week up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So we're going to step outside. We'll take our last break, and we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at pscarchery.com. Welcome back, last segment of the show. I got Danny here with me. He's in the Up North Journal, Up North UP. We got to come up with a name for the UP cabin. Maybe that's what we call it, the UP cabin. I'm good with the UP cabin. <laughs> I got to put put that down below you there on on the screenshot, so that way everybody knows where you're at. I just got right. Exactly. Oh, actually, I got you in the wrong spot. I got Nampa, uh, Idaho. That was supposed to be for Ellery, in case you didn't make the show. So, Ooh, okay. <laughs> so we'll see if we can't change that. But uh, I tell you what, why don't you tell me what you've been doing, what you've been up to up there? Oh man, what a week I've had up here. Um, the weather has been phenomenal. Uh, we've had just a touch of rain last Friday and maybe a shower here and there. Uh, two days ago, uh, may, well, yeah, about two days ago, mm-hmm. um, 
today's Wednesday. So yeah, Monday or Tuesday, I was out working the property in the rain and it was nice because it was hot and it's been hot. Uh, today it got up into the 90s and um, being out in the bush in the 90s, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a sweat factory, but you know, it's a, it, it, it feels good to be working on the property, uh, putting in the time and the effort. Uh, today I was uh, uh, cutting in a trail or two, improving them a little bit, uh, cutting back the weeds so I can get uh, access to it a little easier off of uh, an access point that I want to. Uh, but yeah, it's been nice up here. Did some fishing. Uh, you had that picture of me fishing. Um, so yeah, the weather is just, uh, phenomenal. Uh, it's been a great week and, uh, just working on the property, uh, around the cabin, doing some stuff and, uh, having fun. All right. I got your location fixed. I got oh, you. Thanks. I got you in Crystal Falls. So we got, right. we got your location right. Finally. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been a phenomenal week. Uh, weather couldn't have been better at all. Um, it's been hot. It's been humid. Uh, uh, check the cameras from Memorial Weekend to present. Uh, we've got some bears with triplets. Wow. Uh, we've got uh, some coyotes. Uh, but other than that, the deer look really healthy. They look really good. Uh, we're seeing a lot of deer. Uh, I've, I've, we're seeing a few babies, which is nice. Uh, we're seeing a lot more in, in the way of tracks, the smaller ones. So that's a good sign. Uh, antler growth? Yeah. What was that? Seeing antler growth yet on trail cameras? Uh, a little bit. Okay. No, nothing to write home about yet. And I usually don't see that up here. Uh, it'll be the next set from July to, to September when I come back uh, is when I start really starting to pick up uh, who's growing, who's not growing. Uh, there's a there's a couple of tracks out there that I do want to hopefully get a picture of because uh, for being the heavy on the hoof at this point, they got to be some nice deer. Right. There you go. Hopefully there's some old, older age class bucks that uh, happen to present a, a nice shot for you here this fall. So. Well, that, well that's well that's part of it. it getting up here uh, working the, the the trails working working the the property um looking to what i'm going to plant in september looking at the fields how they're doing uh my cousin's got some soybeans planted they're looking really good uh he's been uh, they they're working the land he's got his soybeans planted they're coming up really good uh i'll have my i, I got a lot of clover in the fields right now that looks really good and i got cam that camera is, is very active with deer just grazing through it so that's nice okay two questions for First one, the apple trees that you planted two years ago, how are they doing? Okay, so uh, the apple trees, uh, for the most part, are not doing well. Uh, a bunch of them are, are probably gone. Uh, they got the, the fencing got knocked down, and the deer just got at them, and it was they went after them, and that was it. It was uh, game on, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, they, okay. they just bulldozed the, the fencing that I had. Uh, unless you're, unless the, I'm gonna have to go with a, a steel fence practically, but uh, and so those are probably gonna be probably all gone. Okay. All right. Fair enough. And then you, you said clearing shooting lanes and things of that nature. I know you, you had your property logged three years ago, I think. If, yep. If memory serves three me years ago this summer. So what does it look like now on your oh my regeneration? It, it is. It is. It, it's it's fun to see how thick the aspens and everything have come back. Uh, where you, a, the first the first month or two, you you were driving the property and you were like, uh oh, what did I do? <laughs> but now I, you take five feet, uh, a five foot jump into the into the into the thick stuff, and you're out of sight. So we got a lot of that going off uh, right from the road in some some spots. Um, it is a good. 10 15 20 feet tall in some spots thick um the, the the fields that you could see quite a ways are getting surrounded now with all the new growth aspen so they're becoming more secluded um and it's really nice then the the boundary areas that we did not touch we only select cutted uh the the, the bad trees out of um Everything's looking good in there. There's some new growth coming up. Um, but, yeah, the, the property overall that we had logged is, is regenning great. That's good to hear. Uh, I always like to hear good success stories because um, yeah, typically when people cut their, their timber, like you said, what did I do? You know, the first time I went in on our cut, uh, I was uh, our camp manager. He's like, "Well," he says, "What do you think?" You know, because he he was waiting yeah, for me well, to say the same thing, and I'm like, "No, that's progress." Nope, that's exactly what my forester he pulled me aside and he he, he asked me. He goes, "What do you think?" Mm -hmm. Three years ago, and I said, "Wow," but I said, "It's got to start somewhere." Right. And 
I know it's going to take time. And I, and I asked him certain questions like, okay, what are we looking at for growth per year? And he says, oh, good years. You know, you're going to have more, you know, about three to seven feet uh, mm-hmm. per year and depending on where you're at. And, and, and I knew it going in. You, you got to erase the blackboard, which we did. And now everything's coming back. Uh, we've got food plots. We, we're starting. We're continuing to work on. Uh, we're getting uh, the soil test done. We're looking at what we can add, what we can grow. Um, yeah, you got it. You got it. it. It's I guess you want to call it a leap of faith. Mm-hmm. You got to have faith. And we hired a forester, and I I laid it out to him. I said, "Dude, you're the expert. I'm trusting you to do what's right." Right. Yeah. yeah and that's the thing you got to tr- you, you do. You, you got to put trust in them. If you don't, if you don't know what the outcome is going to be or what you need to do, then yeah, you got to put you got to put your faith in them. So absolutely, and that's what I did. And 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 three years down the road here, this is our this will be our third fall. Um, I'm really liking it. I'm really liking the way we can get in there uh, and do some things, change something around. Um, what I thought might have changed in some areas doesn't look like it's changing uh, from last year. So it, it's interesting. I thought the deer would change their patterns, but they really haven't uh, in one area. In another area, they might have changed. And we're still trying to, 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 to read that on the property with cameras and seeing. We moved a new camera into a different location that was kind of a, uh, we think it should be a good spot. And we'll find out. You know, that's all we can do is, is okay. put cameras out and see what's happening. That was kind of be a, another question I have for you. He's talking about deer movement and things. Is there anything that when you got up to camp and uh, you, you start looking things over, whether it be trail cam photos, the growth, regrowth and regen or what have you, is there anything that you went, wow, didn't expect that? Is there anything that caught you by surprise this, this season when you got up there? The only thing that, that that's caught me by surprise is uh, some of the spots that aren't coming back like I thought they would, mm-hmm. um, which I thought there would be more growth in these, these, these a couple of spots that I was like, like, wow, I thought there'd be more growth, but there isn't. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but it is what it is. So, okay, it's not as thick as other spots. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll go with it. And, and it's an area that we don't hunt anyways, but the deer... Uh, it, it isn't growing back thick per se with trees, but the, like the ferns right now in some spots are taller than me. And I, you know, I'm, I'm a short guy at five, 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 four. That's something. still big ferns. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm walking into these ferns and they're getting above my head. So it's like, okay, uh, there's no trees here. What are during... you, what are you feeding the ferns? <laughs> right. Exactly. And it's, it's just that pure, it's, it's that sunshine and, the, and, the, and they're just growing up. Right. Now I will tell you, it's been an ongoing war with ticks they are ticking me off literally okay it is just it's been tick fest i i literally walked from my car to the front door of the cabin 15 feet and had a tick on my leg well they're attracted to you they want some no i no idea where he came from but there he was i'm like really they want some of that that default blood i don't know what it is but man they are bad this year and whew it is like tick check 101 every time, whether you're just going out for a for morning coffee, mm-hmm. which that's what we usually don't get a cup of Hunter's Blend coffee, which we're on dark roast this week. Um, what do you think about that? Oh, it's good stuff. I got mine right go here. Sit on, go sit on the front porch, just kick back, just listen to nature, and just get ready to start your day. Absolutely. Well, and so it's one of those things, but uh, yeah, it, it, there's just a couple of spots overall that it's like, wow, I didn't know. I thought it would come back a little bit better, but it is coming back, but in a different sense. Okay. Well, fair enough. I mean, you know, that's what experimentation is all about. So. Right. Exactly. I know I got, uh, I got my soil samples back on my two plots that I sent in. I'm low. So uh, whether it'll be this fall or next spring, I'll be adding more, more lime and fertilizer um, and trying to get a good till on them uh, to get that turnover going. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's had a good time up here. Well, that's good. You, you look good. You look refreshed. I, I see the the old chin growth coming in there nicely. So. That'll be that'll be gone tomorrow night when I get home. Not oh. gonna lie, it's okay. coming off. <laughs> oh, so you're heading back? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, we're gonna leave Thursday morning, head back, so we're home for the weekend and just kind of ease into next week when we all when we I go back to work next Monday. So it's just one of those things. Uh, figure I'd get back. Nothing's going around in town, so I'll probably get out the. Uh, uh, the did you did you unveil? No, I did not. No, no, it's still sitting right there. You know. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. I. Uh, you know, we we talk with uh, who who were we talking with last week? We, we was talking about I can't even remember who we talked to last week. 
Derek Vaughn over at That's uh, right, Derek. Okay, that's right. Over at uh, Sunrise Archery. <laughs> yeah, we'd mentioned that at the beginning of the show, and we got done with the show, and I'm like, didn't even talk about the bow. I got still sitting in the box right here. So no, I still okay. got. You know, uh, I'll 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 unveil what I got. Well, do you want me to go ahead? I can reach right over here and get it. I mean, we got. No, 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 don't do it right now. Let's okay. just do our show, and then you we'll do individual reveals. Okay. Sounds fair enough. So, yeah. So, there's nothing, no uh, festivals, no fireworks, no nothing going oh, up on up here. Fair. Yeah. Up here. Okay. Up here. Come we're on. Have a good old time. Well, down by us, well, we're going to sit at home like Fuddy does. Well, there's there's very few fireworks going off anywhere around here. Uh, today, the governor shut down all of the liquor establishments. You can buy alcohol. You can go to a restaurant that serves alcohol, but you can't drink unless you're sitting down eating. You can't go to the bar. You you have to take it and leave. And to me, it was called, uh, uh, what was the term? I forget the term they used. But it's basically you can get it and go. And I thought, hmm, okay, so you're going to order whatever drinks and then you're going to put them in a vehicle and take off oh yeah so up here they're having a they're having a fourth of july parade in the town over uh they're going to be serving uh they're going to they want the kids to come out they're going to be serving uh popcorn or the, they're going to be serving cracker jacks actually is one of the things okay uh but they're planning to have a fireworks celebration the night of the fourth and shoot off fireworks and okay. uh, they're having a good time up here yeah I, w- I worry about a lot of that with people you know a lot of people especially down here now uh we're not going to have fireworks celebrations so a lot of people we did a story at the news today about uh people buying fireworks you know they're buying a lot more than they normally would because they're going to light them <laughs> off so you gotta have your own you're gonna have your own little show but right now we're we're 90 degrees plus all week ultra dry fire danger is going to be high i just wonder how many wildfires we're going to wind up having here in the state this weekend because of that you know and i'm not trying to poo-poo anybody's fun i'm just saying no, no, it, if you're going to light them off you know you need to do it safely it's reality is because it's been dry up here yeah we had a little bit of rain but i get it i mean it, it's drying up pretty quick here yeah. um and you just you, you know what's going to happen uh spark here or a flame there or a yeah. whatever and yeah it, it could lead probably on, on on sunday or monday show you'll be doing an article about that yeah we uh we actually had one last year uh or was it early this spring i can't remember i think it was earlier this spring we had one close to our property up north uh, oh, okay. that run through an uh, an adjoining uh, an adjoining property that uh we know the owners of you know and it's like eesh you know right you don't want that to happen to your place and burn the woods down so wrong, wrong kind of uh clearing burn that you want to have yeah that's not a control burn <laughs> there you go exactly. not at all there'll be no control so, yeah, burns no, going on <laughs> i'll be back in town uh tomorrow night and get ready for the fourth of july and uh watch my dogs go crazy all right well by the time everybody sees this fourth of july will be over it'll be sunday uh evening so uh yep. you get like i said if you guys got questions you know throw them on the on the screen there or send them to us in the yeah, PM and we'll we'll try questions. to answer them for you so and if we got questions for ellery that was earlier in the show you know we'll get them to her and, yeah. and you know we'll let them answer her. absolutely so i tell you what well let's go ahead and we'll wrap up the show for those of okay. you on the podcast you know go over to our social media pages you know give us a like give us a follow share the show if you would please and if you could go over to itunes give us a uh, review over there that helps us out as well that's going to do yes. it for us for our pre-recorded fourth of july show this episode was brought to you by pse archery buck bait better the hunt rebel six rubs and seasonings easy cut limb walker game call hunters playing coffee packer mac fourth arrow camera arms scent blocker scent lock copper jack and stanislavski release aids Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.